So we just added three more actions to our application, and we implemented a load to do's thunk that will handle the logic of loading data from our server, as well as dispatch other actions and thunks depending on what happens during loading. What we've got to do now is write some code that will take these actions that our load to do's thunk is dispatching, and make corresponding changes to the Redux store when each of these actions occurs. Now, as you may have guessed, the additions we're going to make to our code will be in the reducers file. So let's open up reducers.js. And the first thing we're going to do here is import the three action types we just defined. So let's rearrange this a little bit to make it more readable. And to this list, we're going to add load to do's in progress, load to do's success, and load to do's failure. And now we have to ask ourselves what changes we expect to see in our Redux store whenever each of these actions takes place. And actually, one of the biggest things we're going to want to add to our application, since loading the to-dos from our server takes time, is some sort of loading message that shows in place of our other components only while our data is loading. In order to do this effectively, we're going to want to have something in our Redux store that tells us when our to-dos are loading. Now, there are, of course, many ways to do this. But the way that we're going to do it here, at least for the moment, is by adding another reducer to our file to keep track of whether or not our to-dos are loading. So we're going to define this reducer, we'll say export const, and we're going to call this reducer is loading. And just like with our to-dos reducer, our is loading reducer is going to be a function with a state argument, the default value of which will be false, and an action argument. So the job of this reducer will be to either return true or false based on whatever actions occur in our app. In order to do this, just like with our other reducer, we're going to want to say const type equals action, and then use this type to make a switch statement. Switch type. And the three actions we care about here are the three that we just created. So let's code the cases for each of these. We're going to say case load to do's in progress. And in this case, it'll return true, since when our action gets a load to do's in progress action, that means we just started loading. And then we'll add a case for our load to do's success and for our load to do's failure. And actually, what we return in both of these situations is going to be the same thing. We're going to return false since those actions signify that the loading has ended in our app. Return false. And last but not least, we have to have a default case that returns whatever the current state of is loading was before the action was received. Default, return state. So we got our is loading reducer defined here, but since this is a new reducer, we need to add it to our store.js file just like we did with our to-dos reducer. So open up store.js, And we're going to import this new reducer along with our to-dos reducer. And we're going to add it to this reducers object here. And now our is loading reducer is hooked up to the Redux store. If we run our application, npm run dev, and look at our app in a browser, we can see using Redux dev tools that our application state now contains this new is loading property. It doesn't really do anything quite yet, but it's there at least. So in order to make use of this new reducer, we're going to open up our to-do list component, and we're going to add brackets around the component definition here and a return statement. This will allow us to have more lines inside of our component. And up here, we're going to say const loading message. And this is going to be an element that we display while our application is loading our to-dos instead of our to-do list. So we'll say div, and we'll just say loading to-dos, dot, dot, dot. And then actually what we're going to do is instead of just returning this here, we're going to say const content equals all of this. And finally, down at the bottom of our component, we're going to say return is loading and use a ternary operator to decide whether or not to show the loading message or the content. So if it's loading, we want to show the loading message. Otherwise, we want to show the content. 
And the last thing we need to do here is actually get the is loading state from the reducer. So far we don't have it in the props up here. So to do that, we're just going to go down to map state to props and we're going to add a property that's is loading and that's simply going to be equal to state dot is loading, the current state of our is loading reducer. And then let's add it to our props up here. Is loading. And that's it for the is loading logic. The last thing we have to do is have this to-do list component actually start the loading flow. And to do that, we're going to use React hooks. Don't worry if you're not too experienced with them. They're very simple for this case. We're going to import use effect from React. And we're going to import our load to do's thunk. Import load to do's from thunks. And then up at the top of our component body here, we're going to say use effect parentheses. And inside here is going to be a function that's going to kick off our loading to do's. We'll say start loading to do's. This is a prop that we're going to need to add through map dispatch to props. And so we'll add that prop up here. Start loading to do's. And then down in map dispatch to props, we're going to say start loading to do's. And that's simply going to dispatch our load to do's thunk. So now if we look at our app and we might have to refresh it, there's one last thing we have to do that I almost forgot. And to this use effect hook, we just have to add another argument that's an empty array, which will prevent it from reloading constantly like it's been doing. So let's do that. And now if we go back to our application and take a look at it, it flashes our loading to do's message very briefly whenever we load our page. If you want to see the loading message for more than just a fraction of a second, the server that I created actually has a to do's delay endpoint that we can query instead. So if you go to thunks, you can add to do's delay to the endpoint, and it'll purposely take a few seconds before responding. So that's all there is to it for now. Now that we've defined an is loading reducer that tells us whether or not our application is in the process of loading our to do's, we need to make some important changes to our to do's reducer to reflect the fact that we're now loading data from a server. Currently, the to do's that are displayed after our app is done loading data from the server aren't actually the to do's that we get in the response. They're still just our locally defined to do's. What we're going to do in this video is make it so that our app actually displays the to do's fetched from the server. So what we're going to do is open up reducers.js and we're going to incorporate the three actions we created in a previous video, load to do's in progress, load to do's success, and load to do's failure into our to do's reducer so that it works nicely with our loading flow. So here's what we're going to do. Down in our to do's reducer, we're going to create cases for each of our actions like this. We're going to say case load to do's in progress case load to do success and case load to do's failure and as a matter of fact for now the behavior of our in progress and failure action types is going to be exactly the same as the default case and true we could just leave these cases out but I'm going to put them here for something that we'll be doing later in the course. So what we're going to do is move this load to do success up to the top and simply remove the bodies of these two so that their functionality is exactly the same as the default case. So now let's look at our load to do success case. This case requires a little bit of special treatment. Remember that when we defined our load to do success action creator, we said that the payload would be the to do's array that was loaded from our server. So because of that, what we want to do is when our to-dos reducer encounters the success action, we want it to get the to-dos from the payload. So we'll say const to-dos equals payload. And remember, we're getting the payload from the action up top here. And then what we're going to do is simply return these to-dos as the new state for our reducer. The idea here is that if the user has added or deleted to-dos from the server on another computer, the updated list would simply replace whatever list we had locally. And there are other ways that we might reconcile differing versions between computers, but for the scope of this course, we're just going to do it this way, by saying return to do's. And now, if we run our app again, 
npm run dev and refresh it, we see that it now correctly loads and displays data from the server, which is different than the data that we had before. Currently, our app is loading and displaying server data correctly, but even though it looks like it's creating new to-dos correctly, for example, if we add one up here, when we create a new to-do, the changes only take place locally. Our new to-dos aren't persisted in the server. In this video, we'll see how to make this happen using thunks. So if you remember from an earlier video, and I'm just going to use Postman here for a second to demonstrate something, the way we create a to-do on our server is by sending a post request to the to-do's endpoint, with the text for the new to-do as the body of the request. If we send this request, the server will then create this new to-do and return the created to-do as the response to our request. Now, our server will also add a unique ID, a created at property, and an is completed property to our to-do for us, so we'll want to be sure to save the to-do that we get back from the server in our Redux store, instead of simply creating it locally when the user clicks the create new to-do button in our application. So the first thing we're going to do is define a new thunk that our new to-do form component can dispatch to kick off the create to-do flow to make that request. So open up thunks.js, and underneath our load to do's thunk, we're going to create another thunk, and we're going to call it add to do request. So we'll say export const add to do request, and it's going to take the text of the new to do as an argument, and just like our load to do's thunk, it's going to return an async function that will take dispatch as an argument which we'll be able to use to trigger other actions from inside this thunk. And then inside the body of the thunk, we're going to create the request body that we'll send to the server, which will just be the text of the new to-do. So we'll say const body equals json.stringify text. And now we're going to use fetch again, but since we want this to be a post request instead of a get request, which is fetch's default method, we need to pass an options object to fetch. And don't worry too much about the details here. It's just going to look like this. We're going to say const 